I didn't have anything for breakfast because I had to get up too early to go to the BBC. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, um, my group works on a species of flatworm that's able to regenerate. So what I mean by that is you can take a worm into the lab, cut it into a bunch of small pieces, and each piece will amazingly regenerate a whole new worm. Okay? And that includes the gut, the brain, the mouth, all the kind of things that we have too. Obviously the worm is much simpler. So by studying this simple worm, we hope to get an idea of how to induce tissue regeneration or understand tissue regeneration in more complex animals. Oh, the immortal worms, yeah. So um, because these worms are able to regenerate, and the reason they can do that is because they're chock full of stem cells. So stem cells are cells that can become any other type of cell in the body. Um, so we have stem cells too, um, just not as many. So we think that about a fifth of the cells in this worm are stem cells. And that's key to it being able to regenerate and make all these little worms when you cut it up. We, um, we published a paper um, this week in the journal called PLOS Genetics, uh, which we're big fans of, so it was nice to publish a paper in it. And the paper deals with a gene that we found in the worms which is required for them to regenerate their brains, so remake their heads. So in the lab we take the worms and we cut their heads off and they're able to grow them back. And we really want to understand how does the worm do this. And, and that means understanding which genes control the process. So we're able to um, look at specific genes in the worm and get rid of them. It's very simple. We just say, okay, what happens if you don't have that one? What happens if you don't have that one? So imagine if you had a, a machine, you wanted to know how it worked, or what were the vital components. One way you could look at that is set it doing a task you want it to do, a printer or a computer, and just take out vital bits to find out. Obviously you know if you take the plug out it's not going to work, but if you wanted more detailed information you could try taking out the cartridge or the paper, and you start to find out what different things do. So it's the same with the worms. We can take genes out and see what happens. When we remove this particular gene, the head doesn't grow back. It just stops dead. Um, interestingly, the stem cells are able to divide and make new cells, but none of those cells look correct. They look wrong. They don't look like hell cells that belong in the head. They look like cells that belong everywhere else in the body. Um, so that told us that this gene is required to make all the structures in the head, most importantly, of course, the brain. Okay, well, the name of the gene, unfortunately, is a little bit boring. I'm not going to go into why, but it's called SMED prep. The SMED part comes from the name of the Latin name of the species of worm we work with, which is Schmidtea mediterranea, because I guess someone called Schmidt found it in the Mediterranean somewhere. And the gene name PREP um, comes from a, a long name which has been shortened to the, to the word P-R-E-P, -E so people say PREP. Um, and that name, we have to use that name because there's a gene that exists in vertebrates, mammals already, which has been given that name. Do you have that gene? Yeah, we all do. We all have a gene that looks very much like PrEP. Um, there's not a lot of information about what it does with regards to regeneration. Um, we do know that in fish, you need it to make the brain during embryogenesis. Um, so not, not, it's not quite the same as regeneration, but it's still making new things. So here is a worm. Here, this is the worm body. This is the head, and this is the tail. Let's keep it that simple. And if you look at the darker purple staining, that's where the gene is expressed. So you, as you can see, this gene is expressed in the head, and actually it's expressed exactly in line with where the brain stops. So when we saw that, it was obvious that to us that we found a gene that may be involved in, in making that particular structure because of the way it looks, and that was a kind of happy moment. Um, but the key experiment to prove that was to get rid of it. It was just because just because you had this signal that the gene is active in this region, it could be doing something completely different. So here's a normal worm here on the right. And so the easiest thing to see is the two cartoon eyes that you've seen before. When you knock out this gene, you get a proper kind of structure here. So this shows that the stem cells have divided and moved to the front and try to do something, but there's no eyes. Why have you published this paper? Why haven't you kept it to yourself and done more research? Because um, we... Um, have a kind of, I guess, a responsibility to make our research public so other scientists can read it, do experiments to follow it up, check it's right if they want to. I think it's really it's important to be rigorous so that people can replicate what you've done um, and then go forward with it. So we can think of a, a lot of really exciting experiments to do now 
which are in some ways more exciting than these ones. And we started them already, of course, because you know, we've started doing them as soon as we got the results for this. I mean, you know how long the lab's been running. It's, I've been here for almost four years myself, and we've, there's been people around working with me with, on Playerance for about three. And that's about the length of time it takes to set up a new system, because we're not, we had none of us work with it before, really. Um, and so we're pretty proud to get something out, and I'm, you know, I'm really proud of, of uh, Daniel Felix for getting this out. Um, he's worked really hard, and it, it's a credit to him. Where is he, he? He's off in Barcelona. He's, on, he's gone on vacation. So today there's been a lot of excitement in the press. Um, I did an interview this morning for the Today Show on Radio 4 and then one for BBC Nottingham. Then I had to go back to the, the BBC Nottingham site to interview on the World Service. So that's been quite exciting. Some of them are a bit short and brutal. Hi, so you found the worm that makes the head great. Okay, bye. And then the one on the World Service is quite nice because it was a bit longer and it actually gave me a chance to explain. Because um, a little bit of sensationalist reaction in the press to something like this. I think it's exciting. I think understanding, an, first of all, having an animal that can do this is exciting. And so I think planarians in general get quite a lot of press. But finding a gene that actually is involved for that, I think, turns out to be very exciting. Personally, I think what happens next is more exciting, and this is a good starting point.